डेथ रिकवरी एंड लोन रिकवरी सब्सिडीज विद नबार्ड प्रोवाइड टू द फार्मर्स सम आफ्टर लॉन्ग टाइम इट बिकम अ नॉन परफॉर्मिंग एसेट फ्रॉम नबार्ड इटसेल्फ If you see the Union Security Council, which is completely nowadays is biased in the Western side also, what will the solution? Role of governor in Indian Constitution is support supporting the federal structure or not? Come in, come in. Now, please come in. Good evening, sir. And good evening. Please be seated. Thank you, sir. Mr. Malik, ah, uh, after you have done your project, you got a job and you work for Nabard. Yes, sir. And midway, you have also done your MA in political science. Yes, sir. From Indira Gandhi National Open University. Yes, sir. What were the propelling factors for having done this? Uh, sir, post my graduation in mechanical, uh, I had started preparing for civil service, and sir, uh, uh, because uh, I opted for political science as an optional, I uh, developed an interest in the subject, and I also find it a very uh, contemporary subject with uh, relevance uh, as far as uh, the day-to-day -day happenings in India and the world are concerned. So I thought that sir. Uh, For also to reinforce my preparation and also to have a good career track, I did the subject. You have mentioned about a lot of letter acquisition and other things, especially on the agricultural side. Are they in relation to your job as an assistant general manager with the NABAR? Yes. Or is, or is it some other distinction? Uh, sir, they are related to my uh, work in the field. My present assignment uh, as the district development manager. So these are related to that one. You have also mentioned the best camper state red cross red cross camp. What is this? Uh, so uh, during my school time, there was a state level red cross camp that was conducted in Kurukshetra, Haryana. So uh, it was an eight day camp, and we participated in it. And uh, due to certain activities, sir, I was suggest uh, best camper for boys. That. And you also mentioned very, very, uh, very interesting thing. Like you are interested in singing. What do you sing? Uh, sir, uh, Hindi movie songs, both old and new. I like singing. Just as an amateur, sir, I'm not a classically trained singer. No, we would, we would like we would like a demonstration over here. But at the same time, can you tell me something like we always to keep on saying that the old Hindi songs, the old Bollywood songs, are etched into our memories, while the new ones, the moment they come out of the cinema hall, what would be the possible reason for it? Uh, so first reason I believe is the uh, nature of music. So we have a very soft, subtle music when it, we talk about the 70s, 60s, and 80s. And it's also to do with the melodious voices of uh, the likes of Muhammad Rafi, Kumar Kumar, Tata Mangeshkar. So uh, I believe that there are still no match to the, the prowess of their singing in contemporary times. Third, sir, also uh, I believe the lyrics factor is very important because those lyrics people could relate uh, more with, and most many of the songs also had a message. Uh, it was relevant also, so perhaps uh, these were the factors. These are the factors I believe. But don't you have a, a, a talent pool of these singers as well, like Jai Ho? Must heard about Jai Ho? Yes, sir. What is that? Uh, sir, Jai Ho is a song uh, that is composed by uh, uh, A. R. Rahman and also uh, sung by uh, Sukhvinder Singh. That was in the movie. Uh, Slum Dog Millionaire also got an Oscar award uh, for the best song of the year. So we do have a good talented pool of singers, but uh, at the same time, uh, due to the emergence of auto tuning and all, so many of the uh, not so uh, talented singers are also sounding very good when we sing uh, air them on uh, like playback. 
Do you also have some idea about the ragas, the various ragas in Indian music? Uh, so ragas are uh, musical compositions. Uh, basically, there are uh, 108 rags in the Hindustani classical music. So there are mel melodious compositions and uh, they follow certain rules. Uh, like uh, they should be at least there should at least be five words in one rag. And sir, also uh, there are specific times for singing and presentation of a particular rag. Is a particular way of singing a particular rag also. So this is uh, what I know about the rags. What is hip hop music? Sir, hip hop is uh, one of the contemporary styles of music uh, that emerged in the uh, 40s and 50s and got popular uh, in the 80s and 90s. And sir, it's more of a fast-paced music. Although sir, I don't know about the technical nuances of it. Have you heard about Bonnie Hill? Sorry, sir, I am not aware of that. Are you also interested in dancing? No, sir. Thank you. I see that you had a change in school. Yes, last year. <coughs> what was the reason for that you did not want to continue in the same school? There was some administrative requirement. Uh, sir, actually, uh, till I was in 10th class. So that school only had uh, the, the education till 10th class. Okay, that's it. And uh, you done your MA to IGNU and take a bit of time. What was the reason for taking so much? Maybe you were busy with your job I yes, and sir. also with your civil services preparation. You've taken five years. Yes, sir. So you think you could have done it a little earlier also? Uh, sir, actually, I did my first year uh, by 2016. Like, I joined in 2015. Uh, but, sir, in December 2016, I uh, I started working in Nabar. And, sir, there were official uh, constraints. I could not get the leave. So, I could not take the exam in the next three years. So, eventually, sir, in the fifth year only, I could uh, manage that time. So, how many hours of working do you have? In, from what time to what time in the... Uh, sir, the office hours are from 9.30 to 5.30, but uh, since I am in the field assignment since the past 5 years, there are no fixed uh, timings, sir. Sometimes we have to even work till 9 or 10 on the weekend. But is it person a while or usual pattern is working till about 10 or uh, Sir, in the field, uh, at least 2 to 3 times a week because there is a lot of travelling involved also. So, uh, it happens that we have to go. And your weekends, your Sundays, need time for preparation for that, for your IGNU exams or study? Uh, sir, definitely one could manage that time, if I believe, sir. Like, it was not a difficulty, but getting eight straight leaves in uh, a span of, say, two weeks, three weeks. Somewhere, sir, that was a difficulty back then. So, that's why I could not manage it. Okay. You were the discipline captain at school. Yes, sir. Tell me some uh, good moments and some memories that you have of the school where you found it uh, getting into some anxious moments, not able to control or having some issues. Did you uh, get into any of these situations? Uh, sir, although uh, for one year I was uh, the discipline captain, so I have fond memories because I could instill sir, certain good uh, activities like sir, uh, we used to uh, see for uh, who are the people coming late. So we used to maintain a list and we we find it or uh, we found it out that eventually it got reduced because of the naming and uh, shaming kind of a thing. Second sir, the dress code was also strictly followed. Uh, so we used to have random checks during assembly hours. And also we maintained the uh, discipline for moving in lines. So these things we could do. But sir, there was a, a time when just before the Diwali. So it was uh, certain students, they used to burst crackers in the school. So there uh, we, need to, we, we had a lot of anxious moments because uh, our task was really difficult. We need to find uh, any such activities happening, we need to do random checks of bags also. So still uh, a few times we could not uh, prevent it from happening. What was your method of keeping the discipline under check? So either by correcting yourself or by reporting to the teachers or superiors? Uh, sir, as far as the 
uh, things related to the uh, uh, the uniform discipline so we used to tell the students if uh, anything like happens that they're not wearing proper tie <coughs> or belt or anything like that so we used to tell them that from tomorrow please make sure that you uh, dress properly but sir when it came to coming late to the school so uh, we used to make sure that the student only gets inside the school premises or the classroom once they get the permission from the uh, their respective class teachers and in some cases if there is a, a repeated uh, violation then sir from the principal okay so you used punitive tactics or other kind of tactics motivational law what was it how did you motivate people to be more disciplined and was there any change during your time uh, sir i believe that most of the tactics were a uh, kind of check, checks and balances in nature uh, because sir i believe uh, if i am now with the captain uh, uh, i would for some motivation but uh, more or less sir, they were of checks and balances monitoring and also reporting uh, certain things uh, okay abhimanyu malik yes sir tell me something about abhimanyu abhimanyu from mahabharat sir abhimanyu uh, was a was a warrior in the epic mahabharat he was the son of arjun uh, very well known for his bravery and courage that is ex- uh, exhibited in the mahabharat war okay. you know about jc bos jagdish yes. chand bos yes sir sir he was a uh, he was a, a premier scientist of uh, the country jagdish chandra bos his works included uh, research on the plants and also uh, related to certain radio telecommunication what was the name of his instrument which he discovered to justify the plants are living thing sorry sir i don't know the answer to that now it is is too much use of pesticide in the crops it is really dangerous for our health how it affect our ecosystem uh, sir indeed over use of pesticide does uh, negatively impact our health uh, sir i would just because of my practical experience of it Uh, so there was a study where the average lifespan of person who is engaged in pesticide spray was only 5 years from the day he started doing the pesticide spray so such is the level of uh, of, of problem because sir, there are certain uh, very dangerous uh, chemicals that are there in uh, like uh, like in tricyclozor or bupropazin so these the residual impact because it magnifies in the ecosystem and sir ultimately when it comes to the human beings it becomes more poisonous for, for us to consume so what is the alternative of this pesticide when we are moved shifted to the organic uh, crops the production rate and the yield is gradually down with comparison to the pesticide crops so there can be a couple of solutions to it i believe the first is deploying the good agriculture practices now there are certain things that we can do in agriculture By, by which we can reduce the application of pesticides to a great extent and also improve the yield of our crops so the problem is not with the pesticide spray sir but what we are doing is we are not applying it in the right quantity at the right time and in the right amount that is the issue so that awareness needs to be created second thing if we talk about the organic and the natural farming sir initially for 3 4 years the yield does go low to the to the benchmark yield but sir if the farmer continues to deploy good quality organic manure and the uh, uh, right kind of practices then after 4 years sir it does get at par with the uh, benchmark yield so for that certain patience is required sir what is nano urea and how it is different from the particle urea uh, sir liquid nano urea is uh, like recently been uh, uh, launched by the ifco and sir it basically contains nano particles of urea in the liquid form now uh, sir it greatly reduces the requirement of urea spray uh, it makes it one fourth because uh, obviously at the nano scale sir certain 
properties of the particle they become more uh, enhanced and efficient so uh, sir it is i believe is the uh, is the right solution as far as the problem of u rise comes but the farmers are complaining that uh, when they are shifted from particle urea to liquid nano urea their yield is gradually going down is it any problem in liquid nano urea is it problem in the implement of that nano particle urea what do you think about sir i have had uh, experience with certain farmers those who have used it and uh, i have also overseen certain uh, sprays of the liquid nano urea the results are mixed I, i would say because some of the farmers have reported that they have not seen any yield decline now sir the most important aspect is how they are spraying it like in uh, because sir still there are package of practices that need to be developed as to what height the drone should be uh, operating at and what quantity of the uh, and the nozzle design so these things matter a lot so an efficient sprayer knows how to spray it in what quantity but then there are uh, if it is not sprayed properly sir definitely there are chances of a risk uh, uh, a yield decline crop diversification can help to increase or enhancement of yield or not sir it does help in enhancement of yield how is it work uh, sir because if we keep on doing one kind of a crop now a particular kind of a crop would have requirements of a particular kind of nutrients so the that kind of nutrients would be exhausted if we keep on doing that once we rotate the crops to some other crop so those uh, the soil gets time to get replenished uh, for uh, those kind of nutrients so it does have a positive impact upon the yields of all the crops sir you work in nabard yes sir when nabard started uh sir nabard was established in 1982 date uh, sir 12 july 1982 headquarter of nabard uh, sir it is in mumbai nabard is bank or financial institution sir nabard is a financial institution debt recovery and loan recovery rates uh, subsidies would nabard provide to the farmers it, it, uh, it's some after a long time it become a non performing asset from nabard itself Uh, sir nabard is not directly providing the loans to the farmers it is mainly doing the refinancing operations to the banks uh, but yes sir the npa problem is still there in nabard because uh, we have lent to certain nbfcs uh, which have uh, defaulted in certain repayments but the quantum of nabard's uh, npa is point, uh, less than 0.1% so it's not a cause of worry uh, currently sir what are the roles of speaker in assembly the first role is to uh, maintain the decorum in the house second sir to ensure that the rules and procedures that are mentioned in the uh, lok sabha and the rajya sabha uh, statute books and in the constitution they are followed scrupulously third sir is to ensure that there is a uh, proper discuss and debate on matters of public and general importance and also the laws and also to take actions in case of any indiscipline and with the uh, advent of the anti defection law there was also a very special function to uh, pronounce upon the uh, judgments related to uh, the the defection uh, of the legislators in lok sabha prime minister is more powerful and speaker is more powerful sir uh, if we talk about the overall power uh, i believe sir the speaker is more powerful because speaker does possess the power to even suspend the prime minister but sir for the life of the lok sabha itself uh, prime minister becomes powerful because he can uh, uh, recommend for its dissolution any time if you see the union security council is completely now this is biased in the western side also what will the solution even general un security council it doesn't solve the kashmir issue not solving the uh, israel uh, hamas conflict moreover the ukraine and russia war is going long and long what is the relevant nowadays you have you are thinking that is very necessary reforming un security council or not 
that there is a dire uh, requirement of reform in the Union Security, Security Council. What is the hurdle to reforming this? That the hurdle lies in the very nature of the international politics itself. Like sir, whosoever has power would never want it to get decentralized. So how India can influence to reform the UN Security Council? Uh, sir, India has been pitching very hard with the, all the members of the UN Security Council. We have also got support from uh, various developing countries and also uh, from Global South for our uh, membership for the UN Security Council. But sir, still I believe there is a long way to go because uh, at the end of the day we have uh, a great adversary in the UN Security Council and they have the veto power for any kind of expansion to take place. Uh, we have to counter that veto. So only with uh, uh, more nudging and more influence in the international politics, we can ensure that our space is uh, there in the, the, the committee of those nations. Developing countries and, and southern countries allegedly said that the UN is a puppet of the winners countries of Second World War. Is it right or not? Sir, it is right to a great extent because uh, the structure of the UN and particularly the UN Security Council reflects upon the uh, the outcome of the 19, uh, like the Second World War, and it has not changed since then. Though the world has changed completely after that, but still uh, the countries are not willing to to make changes accordingly. Role of governor in Indian constitution is support supporting the federal structure or not. Sir, role of governor is, I believe sir, the institution of governor is the most important link for uh, the working of the federation in the country because he happens to be the most important channel uh, between the center and the state. Sometimes we see that the governor is not working like an agent of central government. It works like a agent of party who is really uh, ruling in central government. Do you think this? Sir, I uh, do not see uh, it in that regard, sir, because uh, if you talk about uh, the role of the governor, now he has to ensure certain uh, interest of the center and the union to uh, to be ensured in the state. There is no any problem when governor ensure the role of central government in the state. But the problem is that the governor is playing a role of ruling party who is ruling in central government. Uh, sorry, sir, but I uh, I do not any such I do not know any such instance where this is happening. What are the benefit of decentralization of power, and how it is different from DVD dividition of power? Uh, sir, decentralization of power is like uh, having power distributed without like like it's not about complete watertight compartments of power. It's about working in a structure, say a two tier structure, a three tier structure, where every tier has a certain power enshrined in a uh, statutory book. The Indian constitution, where we see the de decentralization of power? Uh, sir, we see uh, in the very, uh, so first we see it in the uh, lists of subjects that are mentioned in the seventh schedule. Second, sir, uh, we also see it in uh, the 73rd and the 74th amendment. In 7th schedule, there is a centralized, decentralization of power is, or divide, dividation of power? Uh, sir, sir, there is a division of power. Division Thank you sir, of power. for correcting me. Okay. What is the difference between the parliamentary com uh, structure of US and India? How US parliament is different from Indian parliament? Sir, uh, US has a presidential system of government, so uh, the executive is not uh, the part of the US uh, uh, parliament, sir, <coughs> the uh, Congress and US Congress, sir, the House of the Representatives and the Senate. Uh, as far as the number of houses are concerned, that they are similar uh, when it comes to India. Uh, whereas in India, sir, we have a parliamentary system of government where the executive forms part of the parliament itself, they are responsible to it 
and they also have to command majority in the uh, parliament in order to uh, to execute them before taliban india invest a huge amount of money and etc in afghanistan but after coming becoming power of taliban in india of uh, afghanistan government india is not recognizing taliban so how can we lose our a strategic partner of afghanistan if india will not recognize afghanistan we will not make any diplomatic relation with afghanistan and this is a clear ground to play for china as well as pakistan also because china has a lot of technology funding everything is china so we are losing our very very crucial partner afghanistan how china how india can balance this taliban especially uh, sir we have Uh, recognize this issue and uh, i believe that the diplomatic efforts are uh, being done in this regard sir we have not still gone for uh, recognition of taliban regime but we have also kept it uh, uh, to to the un that if you uh, accept it so we'll also be uh, willing to recognize taliban government in afghanistan so that is first sense you is not going to accept taliban because in un the same influence of us and western countries as un is completely influenced by the western countries and they are not going to recognize afghanistan so what will india do we are only doing sending some aid medical issues and you know, how long this is work? this will work but i believe that at some point of a time because we have reiterated our stance that our cooperation is with the people of afghanistan so somewhere we will be continuing that and for that sir we would be uh, would, would be needing some kind of meaningful engagement with taliban also to keep china at bay uh, but sir at the same time we cannot forget and government of india has reiterated that uh, it is a terrorist regime after all and uh, it's not very easy for us to go for an open diplomacy with him hum india doesn't declare hamas as a terrorist organization but india declared taliban as a ter- terrorist organization suppose afghanistan declare itself a, a democracy and a democratic government come in power in afghanistan then india will uh, recognize uh, afghanistan government or not sir i might it will be taliban sir i believe uh, if a if a true meaningful democratic government uh, takes shape in uh, afghanistan then probably we would be uh, willing to accept it good thank you sir mr malik yes sir uh, you play shooting volleyball is it like any ordinary volleyball uh, sir shooting volleyball is one of the variants of uh, uh, one uh, volleyball sir. what is the difference uh, sir shooting volleyball basically has seven players uh, against what we have in, uh, they have six in the conventional one uh, sir the Uh, players have to pass over the ball to the other side of net in uh, one attempt in shooting volleyball whereas we have three attempts in the conventional volleyball okay now you tell me like ipl is there any premier league in volleyball also uh sir yes there are many uh, premier leagues uh, across the globe sir no 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 in volleyball in india talk like we have uh, ipl or indian soccer league is there any such kind of a league in volleyball yes sir there is also a volleyball premier league in india what's it called uh, sir i am not sure about the name so is it held yearly or by year any idea sir it's an annual affair for as i could recall so do you know when is being organized sorry sir no no problem no. now india has expressed is his pleasure with the sovereign rating that many of these rating agencies give particularly to india can you tell us why india is so disappointed since you are in the banking sector that yes. most of the sovereign credit rating agencies they have not upgraded the uh, india's credit uh, credit rating since past two decades also lot of water has flown in the past two decades we are now the third largest economy 
and uh, fastest emerging economy in the world. We are third largest economy, uh, sir, in terms of PPP. Yes, in terms of PPP. Okay. Yes, sir. And uh, also, sir, our macroeconomic fundamentals they are very sound. If we talk about our inflation is quite under check. If we talk about other economies. Uh, but sir, the kind of criteria that are being used by certain uh, agencies include uh, 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 include aspects like rule of law. Oh, sir, these are very uh, uh, very subjective kind of parameters. So our our basically point of contention is this only that you should rather work on our uh, our our economic fundamentals. Hmm. What are that economic basic in economic fundamental? That India is putting forth. Uh, sir, first is our uh, GDP growth rate. It happens to be uh, very decent in past, I would say, past two decades. Second, sir, our fiscal deficit is also under check. Uh, if we talk about the other economies of the world, and also the overall public debt. Third, also, sir, we have never defaulted on any kind of payments to uh, outside agencies or. Uh, other countries and any which way sir we have a very limited public debt as far as the outside uh, uh, like countries or agencies are concerned okay now you tell me the reforms that is going on in our armed forces tell me something about the ongoing reforms in the armed forces uh, sir first is the recruitment process Sir, we have come about with a scheme called Agnivi, which uh, happens to recruit the soldier level positions, the uh, initial level position, for a period of four years. So that is done to make our forces more agile, more young, and also uh, to lessen the burden on the public exchequer. Because sir, the new age warfare. You are for this or you are against this? Sir, I believe that it is uh, worth trying. Because it's worth trying. Yes, sir. But India is already trying. Yes, sir. So I. So you are I'm for it or against it? I am in for it, sir. You are in for it. Okay. Any other uh, reform that uh, you can point out? Uh, sir. Uh, again, another reform is the constitution of position uh, of the uh, chief of uh, chief of defence staff mm -hmm. to have more coordination between the three. Uh, uh, three three uh, forces. Again, sir, we are uh, now in, in, uh, instituting the integrated theater commands for better coordination and also efficiency mm -hmm. for operations. Mm -hmm. Sir, we are also embarking upon the defense modernization in a big way. We are collaborating with countries like US, France for uh, for latest technologies when it comes to air force and naval power. And also, sir, we are trying to indigenize. Our uh, defense industries also. So for that, we uh, the defense procurement policy has been fine tuned. So you said you know theater command. Yes. Sir. What is the rationale for having a theater command? Like you know, US has, China has. They have different theaters of war. India is a small nation with a small limited uh, military objectives. What is our rationale for having this theater command? Sir, as a rising and a responsible power and an aspiring power to be a net security provider in the region, we are also moving outwards. Now, sir, some 20 30 years back, we were more confined to our neighborhood. Now, sir, we talk about Indo Pacific, we talk about the IMAX, we talk about CIPIC. So, our outreach is increasing. So new theatres of uh, of opportunities are increasing, and at the same time, sir, new conflict zones are also increasing. So for that, sir, we also require. Uh, Can you give some example? Uh, sir, if we talk about the West Asia, now it is in a permanent state state of turmoil, which has uh, uh, exacerbated over a period of time. Uh, if we talk about South South China Sea, sir, it's also a, a conflict zone, and. Uh, the piracy operations uh, across the region, so that has also uh, only increased with the period of time. Okay. Now, tell me something about economic diplomacy. What do you understand by economic diplomacy? Uh, sir, basically it is about managing a country's relationship 
for the betterment of country's economic growth and enhancing its development uh, uh, parameters so okay. the kind of uh, diplomacy that goes into doing this uh, is known as the economic diplomacy okay can you give some example of successful economic diplomacy that india has undertaken uh, sir i believe all the signing of the fts uh, with different countries so uh, that is part of the economic diplomacy that has certainly enhanced our trade to a greater level give example like sir with uh, with uh, with asian nations uh, we could improve upon the trade uh, relationship uh, although sir since the past 3 4 years it has uh, got stagnant but there was a greater push uh, for for a considerable any way. other better example so uh, with uae we are seeing that uh, with the with the signing of the free trade agreement uh, the level of trade has gone up recently okay thank you thank you sir now you are going to select in this examination thoda sa aap dekh lijiyega kahan pe aap do char galti kiye the ye jagdish chand bos ki wo jo crescograph the instrument tha ye sab dekh lijiyega aur फेडरल स्ट्रक्चर डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन और ये सब को थोड़ा सा देखिएगा बाकी सब चीजें ठीक हैं आपके पास अब उसका तो कोई वो नहीं होता है कि क्या हाँ से कितने क्वेश्चन आ सकते हैं नो वन कैन इंटरव्यू बट इतना है कि आप हम लोग की ओर से परफेक्ट है